Hi, my name is Linda Slocum, and I'm here today to share my story with you and what God has done in my life and what he continues to do in my life. I've been so blessed. I'm going to start out with the beginning of my journey, which is that I had kidney cancer about nine years ago and they took my kidney and said, you no longer have cancer. I was feeling such freedom about that. Three years later, I found out I had breast cancer. So I went to Arizona for treatment for that and was also told, it's gone. You don't have to worry about it. I did that and most recently, um, I had to have some blood tests drawn and they found out I had pancreatic cancer with meds to the liver. And so my story kind of begins that um, I, on this journey that I think God had prepared me for with the breast and the kidney. And I don't, I really, I really believe that, it's that I will have the strength to get through this one, this, this cancer. Anyway, one thing that God has done for me is he has prepared me for just to wait and be ready that he's got everything under control. And he does. Um, so many times I was flying, and maybe it would be, I would be in Arizona and it'd be 8.30 at night and I'd be flying home, late at night flying home from Arizona to Eugene. And I'd look over and under all the masks, I could see my, my um, one of my administrators with his whole entire family there. And I knew I wasn't alone. I had, I had someone that I loved that was on the same plane as myself. And I felt safe and comfortable and cared for that Russ and his family was there. Another time um, I was on the plane and up comes a man, a, another godly man, and his wife that were also in Arizona. And um, again, I felt safe and comfortable and not alone because they were there. And I got to visit with them for a little while. And as it continues, you know, I would be sitting by somebody that was going through hard times themselves and maybe they were going to Arizona to do some interventions with their children and I was able to pray with them on the plane that they would get peace about that and I would be able to help their family. Another time, um, a man that I didn't know and I was hoping I didn't have to sit by anybody but because the Lord always put me where I needed to be um, sat beside me and he was a pilot and he pulled out wings out of his bag and handed them to me and he was also a Christian and prayed and told me that he'd be praying for me uh, another time um, um, another time I was flying into Arizona and it was later in the evening and it's so beautiful flying into Arizona. And there was a young couple sitting next to me. And um, nobody had talked the whole trip up. And all of a sudden I said to him, well, you know, are you, are you living in Arizona? Are you visiting? And they were going to spring training. And I said, well, let me tell you who's, who's playing today. Because I had emailed that to my son-in-law. Corey. So I opened up my phone and you get a little tiny picture at the top and we found out that that was um, Corey's cousin that he hadn't seen for over two years and they totally blessed me and hugged me and again Jesus wanted me to know you are not alone and I was able to call Corey and say I'm sitting next to your family. I've been riding with them for two and a half hours and didn't even know who they were because I didn't remember him since a, since a child. And so 
those are just some examples of Jesus letting me know that I was not alone. And most currently, I'm on hospice services. And I've just been totally blessed by my my family at church and my family here. And I have a tree up that is a butterfly tree that my, my um, here it is right here. And it has over 500 butterflies on it. Some of them are from my staff that let me know that they're thinking of me so when we have visitors come everybody gets butterflies to put on the tree and when I look at the tree I know how blessed I am that I'm still not alone of course God is with me but so are my friends they're on my tree and so there's so many opportunities I I met pastors and have friends so close to Arizona that from my other cancers that I have been able to keep those relationships blooming and, and and they pray for me and they share my story and I have thousands, I know thousands of people that are praying for me and I feel it every day and I'm so thankful and grateful. Sometimes I, I think, why Lord, why me now? And I think because because God has prepared me for this day and he is ready or preparing me a place for my home in heaven and I'm looking forward to that day where I will have my wings and my my gown and I will be dancing in heaven with my family and my friends and all of your family and all their friends I have just been totally blessed on this journey. I'm still continuing to be blessed on this journey. There's another story that I want to share with you. The last time I was in Phoenix, there was a young man and his name was Conrad and he was sitting way behind me and we were in the clinic room. I was at my very low slow. I had infections, I was sick and I was felt just broken. And Conrad starts talking to us because he was from Junction City as well. What are the chances that I have a young man named Conrad sitting behind me that's also from Junction City? So he comes up to me and starts talking and sharing with me. And he's a strong Christian. He has tattoos with Christ across his arm and he is a life coach and for the, um, the sons. And he wasn't there for treatment, he was there for his girlfriend, Linda, which had just come out of the office and left him there. She said he talks too much and she's got to get rid of him sometimes. So Conrad, coach, stayed with us and shared with us his story. And we got to visit with him and then I went back. After I got back, to my room I'm supposed to go to, they had made a decision that I needed to be hospitalized and put me in the hospital. So I was in the hospital for four days and lo and behold, guess who my nurse was? His girlfriend, Linda. Of all the people and all of the nurses in that ward, the hospital, God had blessed me with Linda, which is just a a godly woman just like coach was and I got to spend that time with her and she totally blessed us and took good care of me while I was there and I believe if it wasn't for Conrad coming up talking to me and giving me a hug I would have never known or ever met her if it wasn't for you or for Jesus Christ putting her and him in my life I would have never known another story I have is I went to a restaurant, which is right next door to the hospital after I got better. And I met this young woman and her name is Lily. And Lily is just the sweetest thing ever. And she wasn't supposed to be my waitress, but Lily fell in love with me the time she saw me. And she swears that she's my, my husband away from home because she just loves me. 
and so we would all, I would go over there and have dinner with her and eventually I made her a quilt and blessed her with a quilt and she was able to take that home. Another couple was from Flumoth, Oregon. Again, God blessed me and I just kept meeting these people that were close to home that had cancer that were living in Phoenix and I knew that God orchestrated the whole thing and we talked about that, me and my my new family in Arizona and how important that was to us that we knew that only God could orchestrate those things and he continues to do that, bringing families together, bringing, um, I would say families and friends together that I haven't had relationships with for a while, mostly because of COVID and I just feel blessed and I love Jesus Christ.